Hi, it's great to have you with us on In Focus Free Couch, the show where we bring you some hidden gems from the record In Focus video archive. I'm Dora, he's Kent. We're really friendly. <laughs> Was that weird? You're always weird. <laughs> okay, so today we'll hear some family life tips from mm -hmm. Trafford Fisher. We'll check out an interview with one of my favourite musicians, mm. Melissa Otto. Awesome. And a song? Yes. Melissa gave an exclusive performance in our studios when she was here, so we'll definitely play that again. But first up, let's take a look at a chat that I had with a Jamaican cardiologist a little while back. It's great to be in Australia. Yes. Yes. So heart surgery. That... Actually, an interventional cardiologist. Oh, okay. Well... Which is uh, you'd regard it as surgery, but we call it endovascular surgery. Mm -hmm. We put wires and balloons in arteries and mm -hmm. unlock them. That's basically what we do. So it's the first time is always exciting, but um, you know we prefer the the less messy, um, you know, percutaneous through the skin approach oh, okay. to um, fixing the hearts. So, so you're not necessarily no. unzipping people Absolutely. down the no, sternum no. and cracking yeah, them open. We think we should, you know, one should avoid that kind of trauma. <laughs> <Less>. <laughs> At least patients are better off without it. Yeah, less invasive. So, yes, and the and although that I mean surgery is a fairly traumatic thing for yes. a, for yes. a person, but. Yeah. The difference between you know before and after, what? Well, what do you the difference see? is as interventional procedures done, you can go home the next day. Mm -hmm. Surgery, it's um, several weeks, several months, sometimes mm -hmm. to fully recover. Uh, you know, but the difference between surgeons and physicians is sort of blurred now because surgery is becoming less invasive and medicine more invasive. So mm -hmm. it's like Star Trek. You're just mm -hmm. a doctor. Yeah. Yes, a little bit. Now, in the, in the developing countries in yes. in our region, Edwin, um, historically, you know, there was a lot of problems with infectious diseases, you know, malaria yes. and and that sort of yes. stuff. Now things are changing. Absolutely. And uh, it's now lifestyle diseases yes. that that we're tackling yes. in, in the South Pacific nations, which which matches the sort of disease burden we have Absolutely. here in, in Australia Absolutely. and New Zealand. Is the has there been same, same thing similar in Jamaica, trends the in the Caribbean? Same epidemiologic yeah. transition, they call it. To uh, it's been it's heart disease, diabetes, hypertension. Um, well. There's not much of infectious in terms of infectious agents that can uh, you know, maybe HIV, which is sort of a mod, the modern plague, mm -hmm. but um, it's similar to the problems you have here in most developed countries. Yeah. Totally preventable. Uh, yes, largely preventable. Yes, mm -hmm. lifestyle, and I, I, that's why the sort of our, our view of a, a holistic being, you know, and, and a holistic approach mm -hmm. to, um, you know, in terms of lifestyle changes, in terms of preventing disease is a lot better, works a lot better, it's less expensive and more effective mm -hmm. than sort of look at the other end, the curative and purely curative, and when you, you, you have expensive therapies for, or, you know, bad diseases. Yeah, mm. hard. So do you say this to your patients? Do you say, listen, uh, you, the operation was a success, you're, yes. you're free to go home. If but you if you want to avoid a return back here, here are a few tips. Yes. Well, here are a few tips and yeah. uh, you probably need more than that. You need a program. And actually I worked for, uh, you know, the Adventist Hospital, the uh, Andrews Hospital in Kingston. And in Kingston? Kingston, yes. I love it. Um, <laughs> as well as a, a freestanding cardiac center. Mm -hmm. And they're, they both are fairly technologically advanced mm -hmm. and sophisticated, but we have to balance you know, that with a healthy lifestyle approach. Mm -hmm. And um, both institutions um, have lifestyle centers, you know, at least, well, the Heart Institute has a lifestyle center we call Breath. Mm. Um, the Adventist Hospital has, there's a strong um, presence in terms of uh, vegetarian diet while you're there, mm -hmm. no smoking, no coffee. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of alcohol, being re-educated. Is... No alcohol, obviously. You're yeah. re being re-educated re while you're mm. a patient at the hospital. Do you think the message is starting to get through in the general community that yes. you know, what people think as you know, normal yes. lifestyle practices are actually Absolutely. quite dangerous to your health? That's true. In fact, one of the big issues is physical inactivity. And we've discovered yeah. uh, what came out of the meeting I was at in Melbourne is that physical activity in women may be probably one of the bigger risk factors. Mm. Not not exercising regularly is as bad as smoking four cigarettes a day. I heard yeah. that, yeah, yeah, they say yeah. sitting yes. is more dangerous for your health yes. than smoking. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, true. that's scary. Yeah. So actually in, in Jamaica now, strangely enough, we have a, you know, a lot of run-a-thons and, uh, yes. and walk-a-thons. You're saying bold, yeah. of course. Yeah, well, we, obviously, <laughs> we, you know, there's, you know, we have famous athletes. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's, we have a, you know, it's interesting, and we have something to build on in terms mm, of mm. our tradition. As you know, but then obesity rates are very high, and climbing, just like Australia, mm. and in the U.S., and that's something. It's as you get more prosperous, because Jamaica is now reclassified as an upper middle income country. Okay. Yes. So we can't get aid, unfortunately, anymore. Yes. But it, it's so we have uh, thir you know first world type, developed country type health issues to deal with. 
So it's part of coming of age, unfortunately. Oh, yes. Goodness. Now, Edwin, you speak, was it four, five languages? Uh, well, I, I speak, well, I speak English, obviously my native yes. language, but I also speak French quite well. Yeah. And I speak uh, some German and Spanish. Mm -hmm. right. So you're, you're, and you're obviously a very educated man. You're very well respected in Jamaica. You, a part of your, your training involved um, working in the, in the training in the US. You, yes. You've been in, to Canada. Yeah, French but, uh, Canada, yes. yes. But after all that, you've returned to Jamaica. I mean, with someone with your training surely could have easily, you know, set up a sort of yeah. a, a, a posh practice in the in a nice suburb yes, in, yeah. in in Boston or or, or Portland, Oregon, yeah. or you know, or some, somewhere you know, without some of the social problems that that yes, are associated with Jamaica. Why why did I you think go back? There was a sort of a Christian commitment to service, mm -hmm. and it's something that sort of your family being the way you were raised. Mm -hmm. um, my father was a public servant. My mother is a teacher, and so you know, there's a strong commitment to service and mm -hmm. to have a very strong Christian upbringing. And I, I never thought for a second about staying. I've, um, I did board certifications, I have a US license, but I never thought, I always thought about coming back. Yeah. And it's interesting because you, you, you know, in the book of Isaiah, there is, a prophet says that, you know, you hear a voice from, you know, you, hear, you turn to the right, turn to the left, there's a voice behind you saying, there's, this is the way walk you in it. Yes. And you think there's a path that your, your life has to take and mm -hmm. it's, it's ordained by the Almighty, I think, you, it's just for you to, to choose to, to follow his lead. Mm -hmm. So I, I think in coming back home, I, it's a great opportunity to serve and to make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remain in North America, you make money, you have a good life, but at the end of it, mm -hmm. what do you have to say? You know, you have to give an, ac you have to give an account for what you've done with your life mm -hmm. and your talents at the end of, and that's what we believe. So it's, so it's, and it's been a very interesting journey. It's been exciting. It's um, been fulfilling. It's been challenging, mm. but I, you know, I can't regret. There's no regrets, you know. Um. So just, just as, as we finish, yes. Evelyn, you know, there may be, you know, a number of, of our viewers who are, you know, maybe younger people, maybe thinking about their future, thinking about yes. their career. Maybe they're thinking about, you know, medicine or, or a medical related field, you know, nursing, physio, or, or whatever that is. Those um, professions have a, I guess the reputation of being quite well paid and you yeah. know having a, a lot of um, well you know, a lot of status you know and privilege yes. attached to them. But you're talking about service. Yes. Any advice you could give to maybe some of uh, our viewers who may maybe are thinking of a medical career? Well, you have to have a passion for it, and you have to be called. Um, there are other avenues for creative expression. There are other ways to serve. Sure. So you know, unless you feel a, a calling and a, you know to medicine, I wouldn't necessarily or to health related profession, mm -hmm. don't necessarily go into it. You're doing a very good thing here. You're having an interview program, you're broadcasting, and that's just important. Mm, but, you. you know, I think it's, it's a wonderful opportunity, though, if you, you feel that calling to, to mm. serve. So, um, you know, I wouldn't dissuade them, but it realize it's a long road and yeah. it's, it's a challenging one. So, so saying don't, don't do it for the money, do, it, it, for the do money. it for the passion. Do it for the passion yeah. and because of your commitment to service. I've heard people say that sitting is the new smoking, and now I think I know what it means. Yeah, boy, it's scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, the message is loud and clear, really. You know, we've heard it, but now we've got to actually do something know, about it. I know, like get active. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, I know I do. Hey, time for a break now. We'll be back in just a moment. back. Now, Dora, you're probably too young to remember, but I probably. remember back, you know, long decades ago, this whole thing about self-esteem, you know, was really big, but with parents especially, but mm -hmm. then it sort of fell out of favour. What do they say now? Harden up, princess? Yeah. <laughs> is that the whole resilience thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All, it's all that sort of thing now. So <laughs> let's take a look at how our resident family life expert, Trafford Fisher, understands the issue. A lot of people are kind of a bit iffy about this idea of self-esteem. What is self-esteem and why is it important? 
it has got a bit of bad rap mm. and I think it, um, James most probably because it it sounds if we're centering a bit on ourselves all right. about me and there's a bit of a reaction I think to the me generation mm -hmm. uh, you know I think sometimes Frank Sinatra got it wrong well he didn't write the song right. but but I did it my way yep. um, and we're reacting a bit to that but Paul it's Anker important. wrote that yeah, that's the man that's the man <laughs> it is it is it is um, but I think the whole sense of, of self-worth self-esteem is an important thing, our right. sense of being valued and worth. I think there are three main areas, James, that we that impact our our sense of well-being. Right. Okay. Because I think a sense of well-being, getting along with people well, is an integral part of you know effective relationships, right. social integration, uh, just good community living. We need to have a sense that that we're okay. So it's a difference so, between self-esteem and selfishness. Uh, oh, I think so. Yeah, no question. Right. Yeah, self self esteem, self worth is having an appropriate view of ourselves. Where do we get that from? I think the first one is our sense of belonging. Okay, and that can come from two sources: outside and inside. Mm -hmm. And outside is where people ex share with us that they love us, mm -hmm. that that we bel I belong to this family. We love you. We we think the world of you. We care mm -hmm. for you. That's got to you know really. Em it's about empowering. So we empower this to us. We love you. You're special. You're yeah, you're our part of our treasury, part right. of our family. Internally, it's where we accept, we learn to accept those, me mm. those statements mm. as real. Hmm. We, we internalise that sense of, yes, I do belong, I'm valued. Right. The second one is the sense of worth. And that outside, again, is we're affirmed as, as an individual, not just for what we do, but for who we are. Right. And I think we, we encourage parents to say, hey, let your kids know you love them, not just because they've done a good job of the right. dishwashers, or, oh, you've made your bed, Johnny, what a lovely boy. You are a lovely boy. You can find mm. ways of getting that message across apart from what they right. do, right? You are valued. So it gives you a sense of worth. And I think internally, we, get a, we can develop a sense of, uh, you know, I, I respect my skills and my abilities and uh, and I can use them effectively. The third area is competence. Mm. And again, outside, if people do, hey, you do such a good job of that. Yeah, really? So we let it, yeah, hey, look, look at the way you've done that. And we, we do well at school or, or whatever our whatever our areas as a child, um, relating, playing, the whole world. If we get a sense that, hey, you can do this well, you do a really good job of this, mm. that's really important. And again, internally, we take that on board right. and we accept. So this outside messages and inside messages are important. And very important because having a good self-esteem prevents a lot of problems. If we if we go through life, I'm no good, I'm right. not okay, I'm worthless, it steps into relationships right. in a huge area and yeah, I think having a real good sense of self and as a Christian person, mm -hmm. I think when we know we've got God who provides us a sense of value and worth, mm. he affirms us as his sons and daughters, huge sense of, hey, this is all good, life's good. Wow, I kind of liked how Trafford brought in that whole spiritual aspect mm. at the end of it. I never really thought of it that way. Yeah, it was really good, wasn't it? I mean, how does that Bible verse go? You know, how great is the love that the Father has lavished yeah. on us, you know, that we should be called the sons and daughters of God. It's pretty special, isn't it? Yeah. Specially chosen and adopted into the family of God. Oh, it's great. Now, Dora, this next interview mm -hmm. is from just from last year, not, not too long ago, and it's with one of my favourite singer-songwriters, an incredibly humble and positive person, and now she's a young mum, mm -hmm. Melissa Otto. Well, I'm a little bit flustered and starstruck here because in the studio we have <laughs> the songstress, the mm -hmm. human canary, <laughs> Melissa Otto. How are you, Melissa? Yeah, really good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> now, Melissa, do you realise that before this whole sort of Christian folk revival, you know, Ren Collective, Gungor, all this sort of stuff, you were already doing it. You realise that? Back in what, the early 2000s? Yeah. I <laughs> didn't think about it. Doing. Stripped back, acoustic, guitars, True. simple songs. True, they stole it. Yeah, they <laughs> stole it. So why, why, what drew you to that music, that style, early? Because it wasn't hip at yeah. the time, was it? <laughs> I guess, yeah, because people say what kind of style you do, do you do or why, but I think it's just what comes out. It's mm -hmm. just what feels natural to come out, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, generally what sweet, natural, optimistic, sunny, although you probably wouldn't describe it that way, would you? Uh, or, or, or would you? Oh, okay. I love melodies. I love, it's, I, lo I love trying to make the melody sound like the concept that you're talking about or thinking about and um, especially when it comes to wanting to share something that you've, God's helped you see that is love. Mm. I loved, 
I love the way a melody comes out or sculpting a melody to try and reflect that, the beauty of that truth or whatever. So, so it's all got to sort of work together and the music has to support the message and, sure. and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Now, you came in to um, our office the, the other week and you confessed, I've got a, I've got a baby. I had a baby <laughs> three months ago. I mean, yeah. I, I knew you were married. I had no idea you were even pregnant. I'm sorry. I, was, I should have been <laughs> checking Facebook quick. more, um, no. more Facebook. carefully. So, wow, baby. Yeah. How does that work? Juggling baby, husband, music? Uh, yeah, well, um, music, I feel like, comes from experiences. So, um, heaps of songs have come since, since being in a relationship with Jace or having a baby because... Yeah, whatever, whatever things I'm going through, it's kind of like a diary to me, music. Mm. So, <laughs> so your, your new album here, the, the Journey Home, yeah. does that, are any of the songs on this sort of coming out of that experience of, of marriage? And, yeah, for but sure. But you wrote these before you had a baby, didn't you? Yeah, I yeah. did. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got a few songs that I want to make into a, a baby album now. But yeah, this, this CD, um, basically in the last few, couple of years, I've felt a real... A bit of a tiredness or an aching for um, to be home because mm -hmm. uh, you get tired of the the inner battle or tired of the worry that you have for people that you love just wanting to make sure they're okay mm -hmm. and um, we we're talking before about um, being the older sibling sometimes you get that mm. I don't know sort of parental care I'm always going are they okay uh, I'm the, I'm the they... older sibling too but yeah. I, I just ran away from my responsibilities but you, <laughs> Maybe you took them on <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah are they lonely I don't know I just I just long for the day that um yeah God's back on the throne and love love is the ruling the yeah yeah and, and we can all go home which is what the CD's all yeah, about yeah 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 now your your profession is teaching. You, you study teaching. You're yep. you're a teacher for a while, and yep. uh, like you say, music um, sort of mimics life. Yeah. And I understand that when you were a substitute teacher, yeah, that you were a bit worried about you know how kids like to test the you, uh, you know yep. the sub and you had a little song <laughs> that that helped because my boys were in your yeah. class and they <laughs> no thought it was way. great. So just ha ha how does how it start? Play, play a bit for us. Okay. Because this, this uh, is it great. you like this. <laughs> It wasn't with the ukulele, but it did have actions. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Yeah, kind of. It was like, I'm your casual teacher. Don't be rude. <laughs> Stop that attitude. <laughs> I've got feelings to oh oh oh. I'm your that's casual right. Teacher. Because yeah, they didn't casual with me teachers after that. have feelings too, and that's important for kids to realise that. Is. Boy, <laughs> and it, was that a great way to break the ice? They. Some it was funny how kids, some kids responded. Some kids would be I could tell they were so embarrassed for me. Yeah. They'd like kind of put their head down yeah. and oh not my goodness, give the me eye contact. Singing, yeah. <laughs> like what's happening? But great way Our to break the ice. Laugh and, yeah. So they convinced you were weird from that point on. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool because then they can relate. True. Wow, yeah. far out. <laughs> that's 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 really cool. Yeah. So um so this this album has some uh, some great photography on it. Oh, Which yeah. I understand was in Brazil. You've, yeah. you've toured around to before the baby and everything. You... Yeah, so that's um, taken in northeast Brazil. Brazil is a beautiful place, beautiful people. Um, so, so yeah, I was at the beach. Um, a friend came with his camera. A lady had been knitting these kind of dresses that I was wearing. I it lo looks like crochet to me. Took one no, of her so. dresses, and yeah, yeah, that's how that photo shoot came about. So I felt really yeah. blessed. Wow. Yeah. So you have done a few international tours, haven't you? Like um, the US also you went to a couple of times? Yeah. I haven't been there actually for about seven years. I'd like to go back there again. Mm. The, the automobile tour, wasn't it? Y yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I've been playing with my siblings since we were young, like my two brothers yeah. and sister. And and yeah, we did a couple of, of trips to the States together. But everyone's kind of doing their own thing, so it's getting a bit hard for us to all meet up, but we still love mm, it and we still mm. try to make it happen for sure. Wow, and, and like you said, so you, you've, you've got this baby now, yep. it's inspiring n new songs, so yep. uh, is there another album on the on the horizon for um, Melissa Otto? Yeah, so um, yeah, I've made a few songs for Naya and... Um, That's your daughter? Yeah, yeah. my daughter Naya. Um, I feel a res I, I learned so much about God's love through the way my parents loved me and so you just set, feel that sense of responsibility. You're like, oh wow, like they're going to get a picture of God through the way I love them. And mm. I, there's just so many concepts that I want um, her to learn about. And I've, and so I've, I'm trying to write some songs that sort of um, help her to 
see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, well. I mean, she's obviously a bit young to tell you if that's working or, or not. But generally, when you, when you do perform or people listen to your music, do you get feedback from them about the impact that it's having on them? Well, yeah. Naturally, I'm a pretty self-conscious person and not mm. really a person that that shines to being in front of people. But um, the only way I can do it is is realizing that it's not my truth; mm. it's God's truth, and and um, and of it, it's tr God's truth that breaks through. And so, if if the music ever means anything to people, I know it's because of that. And so, mm. yeah. So God sort of shared it with you. You've got to share it with them for sure. And yeah. if it gets through. Yeah. You can't, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's not. So do, do people come up to you though or, or write to you or yeah, speak to really you about the impact y your music has on them? Yeah, and I do really appreciate it because like you do these things and you and you don't want it to be in vain and so when people do give encouragement that, you know, it meant something to them, yeah, yeah I do appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I mean, apart from saying, wow, I love your music, Melissa, I mean, it's really nice, you yeah. know, sort of generic things. Do they say anything well, yeah, specific like, about what is sort of reaching them about what you're well, doing? Well, yeah, I've had a couple of people say that it got them through depression, which is which like really, wow. yeah, it was amazing. Well, it, well, I guess the songs have come out of a time that I've been depressed and then saw, seen something about more about God's love that has freed me, which... Um, hmm. You keep returning to this theme, don't you? Like God's love, God's love uh, yeah. in your songs and when you talk about it. Yeah. It's it's a big thing for you, isn't it? Especially having Nia has helped me to see God's love in a whole whole greater light, I guess. Mm. Seeing how precious her life is and the love that you have for this little person you hardly know, it's it's crazy. And it may, it's made me just go, man, if God loves me at all like this, well, I really have nothing to worry about. And yeah. It's really helped me to respect myself more too, cause just realizing how, when you realize, you can only be who you're meant to be, I believe, if mm. you know how loved you are. And oh, yeah. And so I believe this, I believe God wants to help us to know his love because it's the only thing that makes us free. Not by, I've tried, I was sharing to you before about um, how I always saw myself as the good girl and kind of got mm. my identity from being the good girl and then, mm. Growing up, realizing that actually it's kind of hard to be good, realizing that I had all these weaknesses, and then going on this big down spiral, just thinking. But this is it in your teen years. Yeah, yeah, thinking, man, if I'm not good, how can God love me? Or if mm. I can't, yeah, and yeah, and so God had meant everything to me, but then realizing that, well, maybe God can't love me anymore. Just it crushed me, and. And then you start to think, well, and then you start to, to believe the thought like, oh, well, I'm not worthy, but God loves me anyway. Mm. But even deep, even further than that is that God has tried to tell us how worthy we are, but like he gave his son for us. That's how worthy mm. we are to him. And yeah, how precious our life is, realizing the preciousness of our life, I believe just, yeah. It, it, it has a transforming you, effect, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, realizing that God actually is proud of you. He has belief in you. He thinks you're something so incredible, mm. so amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, th thanks, Melissa. Now, we, we are going to go to a, a short break now. Um, <laughs> But uh, when, you, when we come back, um, you're going to be in the audio studio through the magic of television, <laughs> and you're, you're going to play a song for us. Which song? Yeah. Can you tell us just quickly about it? Cool. Um, well, as, as, as we were talking about, I'm a casual teacher, but this particular day I didn't get called in for work, and I was trying to busy myself around the house, get jobs done, but um, I, I just took myself off to bed because I was still, yeah, I just didn't have that much to do. And oh, why not? <laughs> and it, and I just hadn't stopped for a while and I just realized that I actually had this real aching emptiness. And I was like, man, um, why do I feel so down and empty? And I realized it's it's because I hadn't connected with God for for ages. Mm. And I'd just been filling up all the spaces in my life with stuff. And, and then I thought, man, I can't just come and talk to God after like neglecting my, this friend for so long and I felt guilty to just turn around and say oh god I need you to fill me up you know but um yeah this song basically came in that moment of thinking that I I couldn't just come to god um the chorus of this song which just goes um I hear your love calling me mm. when it all goes quiet and 
I stop trying to fill all the spaces I remember I hear a still small voice from the one I know calling me home when it all goes quiet I hear your love calling me I hear your love calling me Nothing sounds as sweet when it all goes quiet when it all goes quiet You remind me Nothing separates us Apart from when I turn away Cause I am your child You reconciled us And you feel nothing for me but love Why do I hide? I hear your love calling me I hear your love calling me Nothing sounds as sweet when it all goes quiet And I've been lonely Cause I forgot you And who you really are You're not like me Love never failing, you're just waiting Always hoping that I'd remember That I would hear you Well, I hear your love calling me I hear your love calling me Nothing sounds as sweet when it all goes quiet I hear your love calling me I hear your love calling me Nothing sounds as sweet when it all goes quiet She's really something else, isn't she? Just unique. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Mm. I mean, her voice is fantastic. It's so sweet and natural. Mm. But I don't know, Melissa just seems to make herself so vulnerable in how she shares her heart and her songs with like the whole world. Yeah, but somehow still she's got this quiet confidence mm. just to be, you know, exactly who God created her to be. Mm. Before we were talking about, uh, you know, God given self esteem, and I get the sense that that might have something to do with it. Definitely. Hey, thanks for your company for this episode of In Focus Recouch. Lots of love and blessings. We'll see you next time. All the best.